Oh man, going back to my roots, riding an SV650. Today should be really fun. What's going on guys? Chase on two wheels here at Mountain Motorsports in Roswell, Georgia. And in front of us, we have a used 2020 Suzuki SV650, a relic of the freaking past. This bike is uh, about to be long gone. Suzuki's going to replace this thing, and uh, we're not going to talk about the bike that's replacing it. They actually released the information today for what the uh, SV650 is going to be replaced with, but you guys are here to see what this bike is all about. An amazing starter bike this thing is. So I'm excited to get going with this first drive, but first we got to see what it looks like, and we got to see what it sounds like. All right, guys, that's what the bike looks like. That's what the bike sounds like. Now, while I get my gloves on, I can tell you this video is not sponsored, but it is supported by the WBRGarage.com membership page. This first start is brought to you by WBRGarage.com, where we take wreck bikes, we turn them into dream bikes, and we give them away to viewers just like you. If you would like to get entered into this season's giveaway, head over to WBRGarage.com to get entered for as little as $5 a month. Also, for the rest of season five, we're giving away two times entries. That's WBRGarage.com two times entries for the rest of season five for as little as five bucks you can get 10 entries per month and back to the first ride if you guys don't know we build motorcycles and then we give them away to our members so if you want to be the winner of one of our next motorcycle builds check out wbrgarage.com it super helps the channel it's actually the best way to help the channel out uh but without further ado let's ride this thing all right let's get her turned on all righty guys uh I'm 5'10", I got a 32 inch inseam, and as you guys can see, I got super bent legs here. Uh, I am easily in control of this motorcycle right here, so no problems there. And uh, without further ado, I think we get started. I gotta hold that whole clutch. There ain't no two finger clutch situation with this one, boys. All right guys, uh, while we get out of this parking lot, I do wanna invite you guys over to check out our Discord server. It's full of motorcycle people just like yourselves. So if, you wanna, if you're one of those Discord people and wanna hang out with other motorcycle people, Go check it out. We'll have a link in the description. All right, let's see if we get to go. Oh, we do. Oh, snap. I will. I will gladly. All righty, guys. Let's get it going on the 2020 Suzuki SV650. This bike has been in the motorcycle market since I started riding. And I've been riding for about 12 years now. So ever since I've known about motorcycles, the SV650 has been in the market. And... It's kind of sad to see that Suzuki's going to uh, be getting rid of it, but I'm actually impressed that Suzuki's going to be making some changes. So I'm interested to uh, judge this motorcycle compared to that first SV650 I rode, as well as the rest of the market that it is in competition with, which is a pretty stout market. You guys know the naked segment right now on motorcycling is hot like lava can't touch the ground type hot so let's get into it and let's check it out first things first guys let's talk about the body position so uh right now seats kind of harder than i would honestly expect it to be and it cups my butt pretty well the only issue with the seat right now is it's one of those seats where my butt can't really move around it fits into one specific place so i don't love that because if i needed to go and like lean off the seat the seat doesn't really it doesn't easily let me do that. So I'm not too big of a fan of that, but I have no problem with the uh, softness slash hardness of the seat. Uh, legs wise, my legs are tucked back just a little bit. 
I do feel like I'm sitting in the motorcycle here and then my arms are just draped down in front of me. I do kind of feel like the handlebars are a little farther back than I'd like them to be and they're a little short. Uh, it feels it feels like I'm, I'm like this kind of which is a little strange but overall relatively comfortable body position and uh, don't really have a ton of problem. I do feel like my legs are a little more uh, squinched up than my top half gives me. Oh, and top half wise, I am braking for the shred light for, with the cop motorcycle guy right there. Um, but for, as for the top half, I am only slightly leaned forward, but not really leaned forward that much. You first drive fans will know that typically this is the red light where I watch cars almost run into themselves. <laughs> uh, but it is also the red light where I change modes. But this is a motorcycle that doesn't have modes. So, uh... It's a very raw machine, not a lot to worry with, not a lot to deal with. Uh, you just, you get all 75 horsepower and 47 foot-pounds of torque out of this little V-twin from the rip. We have ABS? Wow, no ABS on the front? You serious? Ah, uh, there's ABS on the front. Okay, good. Thank God. I was about to say, a 2020 bike with no front ABS? That'd be terrifying. So guys, since we're kind of stuck in traffic and we're going pretty slow speeds around here, Let's talk about the uh, in-city balance of the motorcycle. Now, the 2022 SV650 is a little bit on the heavy side at 432 pounds. I believe that's, that's pretty close to the number. For the size engine and the power of this bike, I feel like it's a little heavy for what it needs to be. And I feel like because of the handlebars being feeling like they're a little thinner, I don't feel like I have as much control over this bike as I have felt on other naked bikes that mixed with the weight i'm just not feeling as flicky on this bike as i i guess i want it to uh this class this middleweight naked class is full of some amazing motorcycles that are amazing in city bikes and so the competition is pretty stiff for this thing i don't want you to think it's a bad bike it's not like i can't you know i'm not agile in the lane but compared to other bikes in its class, it's not as agile as I would kind of want it to be. Especially for this style of riding. This style of riding, this thing should be amazing at. And it's good at. It's just not, it's not amazing at. And that's where we're at. We are spoiled for choice when it comes to naked middleweights. So guys, one thing we can talk about is balance and like how the weight is proportioned on the motorcycle. I do think that the SV650 is pretty well balanced. Uh being brand new onto the bike even with uh shorter handlebars i still feel like i can control it pretty well even at low speeds that's something i really care about uh it, personally at least as a rider is i want the balance of the bike to feel well and i want the weight to feel good and i feel like suzuki's got the weight balanced on this thing really really nicely oh i was hoping we were going to get this turn oh wait maybe we do maybe we do get this turn go 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 come on oh my god volvo you piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh this uh the power delivery in the city on this bike is so good i i really love this little twin uh here while we're stuck at a red light let's uh lean the bike from side to side the bike does feel a little heavy once you get it leaned over especially compared to other bikes in the class and i'm not talking weight i'm talking how the bike feels you guys get confused with that a lot in the comments i do not talk about specs i talk about how bikes feel but uh, the SV650 doesn't feel too heavy. It feels like medium weight heavy when you're leaning it over, but it has that low center of gravity and gives the rider this feeling of being in the motorcycle. And one of the benefits of that is your feet are close to the ground, so you can easily control the motorcycle. I got both feet on the ground. I feel very secure. I wonder if me sitting inside the motorcycle in that kind of feel is leading to me feeling not as um, agile on the bike. And obviously there's a lot of factors to do with that, but I think that could be one of them because if you sat upright and tall on the bike and on top of the motorcycle, you get an entirely different feeling as a rider as compared to sitting in the bike. So guys, I, I gotta say, the, something I've been noticing lately is I'm starting to really love, and I'm talking like love, the 700 and 900 class. I feel like the power delivery we're getting on those style motorcycles and the balance of power and weight and everything is so on point for what you need for city riding, like in town, which is where we are right now. 
And this uh, SV650 is doing the exact same. The amount of punch that it has and how it delivers power is just really smooth, torquey, and fun that makes riding in town like super solid. Um, we're about to get on the highway, so we got to do a highway run of the 2020 Suzuki SV650. We got a 40 to 80 pull to do. I imagine this is probably going to be a, a second gear situation. We will have to see. This is going to be a bit complicated. We got a giant truck that could crush us behind us. All right, guys, 40 to 80 pull on the SV650 2020 on your mark. Get set and I tease you and go. Look at the SV650. <laughs> it don't give a shit if it's going away. It is going to give it a solid 40 to 80 pull. Hell yeah, little SV650. <laughs> that was awesome. That's what I'm talking about. That torquey fun twin will send you to places you want to go. I am so proud of this little motorcycle. Hell yes. That was a good time. All right, guys, we are here on the highway, so we got to talk about commuting. So first off, let's talk about the wind. The wind's pretty bad. That mixed with that upright body position, I am having to use my abs, which I ain't got a lot of, to lean me forward. I could probably deal with about 20 or 30 minutes of this, but after that, I do feel like I would get pretty tired pretty quickly. Uh, let's talk about maneuverability here on the highway. You know, honestly, pretty similar to city streets. I don't feel like I'm sluggish at all, but I got about a, a five out of 10 on agility level. Your part of that is I'm fighting the wind and I'm having to fight to go side to side. The good thing is I feel relatively planted in the lane. I'm not being thrown around by the wind. So at least I've got that. Power wise, we're totally fine. I'm in six gear, I'm going 86, and I've got plenty of revs left. If I wanted to throttle up and get around traffic, I could, I could probably even downshift a fifth and get even more, but up there in the high revs, you're not gonna have a ton of power. So it's gonna be a little sluggish at highway speeds to get around traffic, but you're not gonna have a problem getting up to highway speeds at all. Obviously, like I said, no cruise control here, no electronics, so it's all you. I am getting a little bit of vibration in my feet and the slightest bit in the handlebars, but that's all the vibration I'm getting. So the bike's being pretty stable and feeling fine on the highway. Like I said, not a huge commuting motorcycle, this SV650, but not a bad showing. The SV650 has also been in the market for God knows how long. That means there's plenty of aftermarket companies that make stuff for this bike. I guarantee you, a quick Revzilla search, and you could uh, modify this thing to be better commuting. So if you're looking for a cost-effective bike and you do end up doing a lot of commuting, that is totally worth your time. All right, guys, that's the highway on the SV650. We got our big turn, so uh, let's get prepped up to lean this thing over. Oh, man, we're going super slow. You know, the SV650 kind of reminds me of the MT-07. It doesn't feel terrible when I lean the bike over, and obviously I'm not leaning it over much right now. But on our camera car run, we got a much better uh, speed through this turn. I don't love the way it feels. It feels a little kind of all over the place. The suspension doesn't feel locked in place. I don't have, I'm not overconfident with the way I feel on a turn, but I don't feel sketchy, which I guess is the bar I'm trying to hit. All right, guys, before we keep talking about the SV650, let's see what the guys in the camera car think of the SV. Thanks to our buddies over at Cardo. Some people say that the SV650 is starting to look a little long in the tooth, but still looks good to me. Would not mind having a loaner bike of this. Uh, hot take. Out of all the Suzuki's, it's my least favorite. I like the half-fared version and the cafe one we did a while back, but the full naked one? Not my cup of tea. I think it's ugly. All right, guys, in the camera car, thank you for your opinions. And even more so, thank you, Cardo, the number one Bluetooth communicator for motorcyclists. We got a description link that will give you a discount if you use it. So uh, go down there, check that out, and uh, save some money on a Cardo. We love using them here in the shop, which is why they are a sponsor on the show. All right, guys, so the SV650, um, not terrible on the highway. I think some a, a few choice mods would go a long way with really helping this bike commuting. 
First, let's touch on uh, power delivery of the little SC650. And let's also all look at the uh, truck here and laugh at it. Because that is, that is probably the ugliest truck I've seen today. Not a bad green, though. So there's that. Uh, going back to the SC630. So, guys, as you saw on the 40 to 80 pull, all of the fun and all of the power of this motorcycle is going to be found down low in the revs. It's going to be torquey and it's going to propel you quickly, but that power is going to taper off relatively quickly if you get the revs all the way up. You're looking at places like the highway and stuff like that. I feel like the fun of these nakeds is riding around town because you have such a good amount of torquey fun power and that's where the revs want you to be like giving you the power. I, I love these things for city riding. Now, as far as the suspension, like I said, we don't have adjustable suspension. It doesn't feel great. It's a little soft. It's a little all over the place. But for city riding and city kind of maneuvering, it's totally fine. I wouldn't really worry about the suspension until I was in a situation where I was trying to really push this motorcycle. So uh, you're looking at like a track day or maybe some technical riding if you live in a place like we have uh, the mountains a little farther a few hours north of us this is not necessarily a motorcycle i would buy to go to the mountains if you go to the mountains every now and then or you know you go to technical riding every now and then it's totally fine it's adequate i think you're going to find yourself wanting to either up the suspension though or buy a different motorcycle if you're going to be doing a lot of riding like that as far as the braking uh, i haven't had really an issue so far with the brakes uh, they're a little soft, as you would expect for a motorcycle of this price point. I feel like the power of this bike, though, is better than the brakes that it has on it. Uh, I don't think they're to that level of it's, like, unsafe. I want those brakes to slow me down a little better. Not a huge fan of it. Uh, as far as the gearing on the bike, I've, I've enjoyed where I've been on the gears. You know, I've, I've been going up and down the gears... I feel like they have them set up really well to pair with this engine and that torquiness. You know, you get some torque up and you're hauling and then you shift and you get more torque. I, I've really loved it for sitting riding. And once you get up to those higher gears, you know, you're looking at fifth and sixth gear. Plenty high enough to get on the highway and chill without having to rev the hell out of your motorcycle. Which for a parallel twin is a big deal. You don't want to be revving the hell out of this thing for long periods of time if you're going to be riding on the street for a minute or on the highway for a minute. So I think the gearing is, uh, pairs really well with the, uh, V twin that it's got. So we're all solid there. My main thing, suspension could be much better. Brakes could be much better. Those are kind of my pain points. Uh, currently <laughs> I came to a stop and I did not realize how, how far my foot was from the ground. It's, it's like a foot, not a lot of ground clearance on the Suzuki SV650. <laughs> All right, guys, so uh, let's talk about the cluster on the SV650 here. Uh, very Japanese, very Suzuki here. No real surprises. Uh, Levers-wise, the levers are fine. Uh, our clutch lever is non-adjustable. Not a huge fan. They feel fine, though. We do have an adjustable brake lever. We love that. The feeling on the levers and the, you know, the using the clutch and the brake, they feel good. And this is a 2020, so it's a little few years old and uh, so feels great. I'm not a fan of these giant buttons. Honda does the same thing. I just, I, I don't love how big they are. I get a click when I use them. They, they function fine. Uh, you're definitely not going to have any sort of premium feel with uh, controls like this. But, you know, as far as the button, I want to know when I press it, even if my eyes are closed. And I get that with these buttons. So at the end of the day, I don't really have anything to complain about. Uh, now, I can't judge the mirrors because obviously we have this uh, cheaper aftermarket mirror. It works fine. I don't have a lot of vibration, so it actually works okay. I'm, uh, I'm okay with that. Kind of wish I had two of them. But as far as the cluster in front of us, you can see we've got that digital dash. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It pairs decently with the motorcycle. This bike has no rider modes. It has no settings to change. So... There's not really an issue with that screen. Like if it had a nice TFT, like for why? You know what I mean? There's nothing to change on it. Uh, I, there is a weird thing about the design of it. I hate this little bump area. I get that that's where the controls are, the little buttons here. And then final thing is the width of the handlebar. I don't know if this is stock, but 
it just feels short and I know I've said that a couple times but I'm not liking how short it is I want it to be a little wider or maybe a little more forward something I do not like the position of it now as far as the shifter and the brake pedal brake pedal has been fine no comments there slows the motorcycle down slightly and uh, as far as the transmission goes I get a I would call it a, I, I get what I would call a muted like uh, feedback from the shifter I'm not getting a super satisfying feeling but I would say it's just okay you know there's there's nothing crazy good crazy bad about it it's adequate adequate's probably a good word <laughs> we'll use a more professional term uh, it's got an adequate shifter I, I don't wonder at what gear I'm in I do love that I have a gear indicator on the screen I also love that I have a fuel range a uh, what is it seventeen thousand dollar Ducati Street Fighter V2 does not have a fuel range so I massively appreciate the fact that I have one of those here anyway guys uh, I'm gonna pull off up here we're gonna do a little walk around with the bike uh, you guys have been seeing it from that camera car footage but I haven't and I got I feel like this bike has heart I started on this bike I feel like I need to walk around and talk about this thing also it's kind of what I do alrighty dudes Suzuki of course we got it in silver and blue blue being a very Suzuki color I honestly think the blue is really good and I think it's used really well I think this is my favorite combination of how to use color is you match the wheels with a tubular frame and subframe even though this isn't really a subframe is it it's the same it's one piece frame yeah I, I like the combo of that I do think the seat's kind of huge I do love that the seat uh, the rear tail comes into a a little point there that exhaust is as big as a uh, ZX10 from Kawasaki I'm I don't know why that exhaust is so big but it's a little ridiculous don't love that swing arm looks a little cheap uh, don't love that but the, I mean at the end of the day it is a cost-effective motorcycle you're not spending you know 10 grand on something super premium one of the cool things about this motorcycle is look at the engine area other than having to get to the top of this head, you have access to this entire motorcycle and don't have to take off nearly anything. Even if you had to take the radiator off. One? Is there even one on the other side or does it slot in? Two bolts, radiator comes off. That's pretty cool, you know, if you're like a mechanically inclined person. So, pretty good motorcycle for that. Uh, but guys, overall, I, I, I'm not a huge fan of the looks. Uh, you guys can let me know in the comments if you are. Uh, let me know if this is your vibe. I would be uh, be interested to see. Uh, but guys, what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to take some photos of this motorcycle to post on our Instagram page. If you guys aren't following us, we are at C, the number 2 W picks over on Instagram. And we're on TikTok at Chase on Two Wheels. If you guys are fans of vertical content, make sure to go follow us over there. I'm going to take some photos and I'll be right back. Alrighty, guys, let's get back on this bike and finish up this video and talk about who this bike is best for. Because I, I have a very niche group of people that I think this bike would be great for. Alright guys, before we get to who this bike is for, steering stem lock test. Pew! Let's see where she lies. I would say that's the upper 40%. Not terrible. Especially not terrible for a motorcycle that I'm recommending for street use. So you can, you know, maneuver through the streets. Alrighty guys, the big question of the video, who is the SV650 for the 2020 model? Now you guys know, like I've been saying, I started on a SV650 back 12 years ago and it was the S model. It had some fairings on it. I loved that motorcycle and I love the SV650 and I love the 650 class in general for motorcycles to start on. I think they are a phenomenal place where you've got enough power to learn and safely learn to ride a motorcycle, but you don't have too much power. Now, it's not to say you couldn't get yourself in trouble with the power that this bike has, but I think as a rider, I, I loved my SV650. The only reason I got rid of it is because somebody hit it in a parking lot and flipped the thing upside down. 
it was only at that point that I updated to a R6, but I was not planning on upgrading that motorcycle. I felt power-wise, I had ample amounts of power. That's one of the things I think some people are looking for in a bike that they want to start on is they don't want to get something like a 300 and then feel like they need more power in a year or two years. I feel like this is definitely a bike with enough power to grow into, so I think it's a phenomenal starter bike. Where I think it's the most ideal is a starter bike for somebody that is mechanically inclined, that is interested in working on their own motorcycle. You guys have seen throughout this video, no traction control, no modes, no nothing to worry about. And when you start adding a lot of tech into a motorcycle, you start introducing that bike into a sector where if you if something goes wrong tech-wise, you have to take it to a dealership. They have to plug it into a proprietary computer to diagnose things. But that's one of the beauties of the SE650. This thing is literally just a motorcycle. It doesn't have a lot going on with it. It's a very pure riding experience. And if you're interested in working on a bike, it is a great platform because one, you don't have to take off a lot of stuff to do work on it. And there's not a lot stopping you, from, you know, a lot of complicated crap to deal with. So if we're going to name an ideal client for this bike, I honestly think it's a younger beginner rider that is interested in the mechanical side of riding. I know that's a niche market, you know, that's, that's niching down a, a decent amount, but I think that style of rider would be literally perfect for this motorcycle. And I think somebody like that is going to have an incredible time on this bike. Of course, that's only my opinion, guys. Let me know what your opinions are in the comments down below. I'm Chase on 2Ls. You guys go out there and ride safe. I appreciate you riding around with me. And before you get out of there, if you are looking for your next motorcycle, go check out Mountain Motorsports at the dealership I started at. There's a link for them in the description down below. And if you use that link, you can actually get a discount on your next bike. Uh, they got like five dealerships up here in North Georgia. They got tons of inventory. Go check them out. Support the channel. So, uh, and also shout out to Mountain. I wouldn't be able to do first rides if it wasn't for them. But yeah, guys, that's all I got. We'll see you on the next one. Later. Outro crew, thank you for getting to the end of the video. Make sure to put those in your comment down below to make sure I know that you are in the outro crew and you made it through the entire video. Outro crew, I think I love, or at least in my head, I loved my 2005 SV650S more than I love this. Do you think that's nostalgia? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And are you sad that the SV650 is going away? Let us know in the comments down below. Make sure to hit the like button because you made it to the end of the video. And I'll see you on the next one. Later.